I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Brandon Keith Davis. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? Well, I am great. It's actually my morning in China, but it's uh, only about 10 o'clock in the morning. So I'm looking forward to a good day. Oh, that's great. That's great. I was just in China a couple episodes before. Um, so it's a great pleasure to connect with you. Uh, it was Eva Yu, who is um, uh, uh, definitely an, a contributor to technode.com, if you would. Um, I'm guessing if you don't oh. know her, it'll be a good connection. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I listen to their show and they have an active China um, blog and podcast as well. So I uh, look forward to that. Yeah, wonderful. Well, so you are in China. I'd like to know which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time. I would have to credit LinkedIn. I think we kind of collided, uh, mutually collided on there and um, through some sort of podcast yeah. uh, connection. So, yeah, yeah it's great. Yeah. to the, the beauty of LinkedIn. Yeah, the beauty of the podcast. Ooh, the beauty of the podcast. <laughs> well, tell me about your podcast. I got to listen to it. Wow, amazing stuff. Tell us about it. Name and... Oh. Thank, yeah. Yeah. Th- thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, my show is called Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom. And the short take on it is that it's basically about foreigners doing interesting or unusual or perhaps crazy things here in China. I'm a, I'm a film producer and uh, entertainment guy by profession. And I love the business. But the tricky part, the downside is that it takes kind of forever to get a lot of things done. So the podcast is I do it for a lot of reasons, but mostly for a mental health exercise. It's a production that I can completely control and produce and deliver uh, every week. And it's just me. I just, you know, it's me and a guest. So it's yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely easier. Um, one guy was on uh, before and, you know, he said producing an album or producing video is ooh, so much more challenging than producing a podcast. Uh. <laughs> oh, totally. 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 Yeah. I've been, I've skirted around most kinds of production and podcasting is probably my favorite in terms of the workload. Yeah. It's still yeah. work as you know, cause you're doing 20 a day, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so who, who did you learn this from the skill of uh, simplifying your passion, if you would? Well, I have always been interested in communication. So I've, I've always sort of been in and around entertainment or performing arts professionally and, and semi-professionally and as an amateur in terms of podcasts specifically, you know, Mark Maron's podcast was one that was very important for me. I've also always listened to radio shows like you know, uh, various NPR shows. But with the advent of podcasting, um, Mark Marin and Tim Ferriss, and there's kind of an esoteric podcast called Rune Soup that I love. And Guy Raz has How I Built This. And so my show is sort of my mashup of all of that. I try to do the the in-depth version of like a Tim Ferriss episode, only very compressed. I try to run between about 30 to 40 minutes of interview, plus I do, you know, an intro and an outro. So I'm trying to give listeners a really concise, in-depth version of what someone's perspective is who's come here and is, is making a go of something, you know, crazy in a foreign country, <laughs> but also what, what they can share with other people. That's really my angle is what can you share that you've learned and you know, what should people know before they come here? And if you are here and you want to work with the outside world, what are the best tips and tricks and things that you can share with with mm-hmm. other folks? Wow, you're a bridge. You're definitely the bridge. Love that, that's 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 kind of been my angle. Yeah, 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 love it. So hey, being the bridge means you're stomped on, right? Sometimes, right? Uh, <laughs> this is true. This why, is true. Why, despite that fact, why will you continue to repeat these skills that that definitely put you in place to become and um, stand as that bridge? Well, it, you know, it's really satisfying for me. It's, um, I mean, personally and professionally, I've always felt. Uh, on a personal level, I've always been interested in the world and traveling and trying to know other cultures. And, you know, I love my country, but I knew our history when I was about five years old because we're a pretty young country in the U.S. So I wanted to explore the world. And so for me, the benefit that I get from getting to talk to other people and learn their stories is, you know, it far exceeds any any growing pains or discomfort I have along the way. And professionally, I produce things and I also work 
as a consultant on international co-productions. That's kind of my angle professionally. Mm. And so, you know, there have been as business benefits, but at the end of the day, it's a personal emotional connection and that's what keeps me going. Yeah. It's like having your cake and eating it. Uh, it is. That's my favorite. Why, why have cake if you can't eat it? Exactly you know? right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me one other thing, Brendan. Or oh, before I do that, where's the best place for yeah. us to connect with you? Oh, um, crazy in a good way is uh, dot com is my website and all the links to the show and you can find me that way. Everything is linked there. And the idea comes from the idea that you have to be at least a little bit crazy to do what I'm doing, but hopefully it's in a good way. Yeah, I love that. I definitely love that. <laughs> wow. All right. Tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years. Meditation. I have meditated on and off for a long time, but about four or five years ago, I had a particularly big business challenge and it was very stressful and difficult as those things are. And I re-upped on a semi-regular meditation practice. It became regular. And so it's consistent. I do something in the morning and in the evening. And that has been, uh, that's been a lifesaver, both just metaphorically and quite practically as well. So (laughs) meditation. How does it make you feel? Um, connected to the world and the universe and myself and, and, and as well as getting out of my actual self, you know, the, 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 the meat suit that we wear every day and connecting to spirituality and the greater, uh, you know, I sound, I sound like a total hippie, right? You can tell I'm from California, but, (laughs) but, uh, but, 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 but but it helps me to, it helps me to feel like I'm transcending the bounds of self and get out of myself and get out of my own head and be able to connect to people on a real fundamental way. And that in the morning, it helps me to go into the day with a lighter, uh, you know, lighter load emotionally. And at night, it helps me to reframe anything that happened that was good or bad. It helps me to put it in context as I go to sleep. Hmm. Suggest to someone that's listening, someone that may have had that scenario who probably may be in that right now, right? A business challenge, Mm -hmm. why they should do what you've done. Well, I can, I recommend meditation to anyone. And the great, probably the, the greatest thing about it in terms of access is, you know, there are tons of free ways to do it. The, I'm a huge fan of the Headspace app, which has really sort of democratized the process and they have an intro offer that's, you could repeat the first 10 lessons for free forever. If you want, I have the paid subscription too, but, um, I do it more of a, something closer to transcendental meditation is sort of my personal practice, but regardless, you know, whether you're very religious in a certain way or whether you're spiritual, but not religious, or whether you have no religion at all, meditation works with any of those. It's compatible with whatever your standing belief system is. It doesn't challenge those beliefs and in fact many forms of religion that i'm familiar with at their core they often have some kind of a meditative practice whether mm-hmm. that's for the common folks or whether that's what the, the you know the people who got the inside scoop do or the priests or whatnot so um it's accessible to everyone and there are tons of things but you know headspace is a great space a great place to start if you're stuck and just want to kind of get get a, an overview yeah, Headspace definitely helped me uh, tremendously as well. Just adding that oh, nice. amazing audience. Yeah, and uh, again, the first 10 are free, but when you definitely go into the paid, wow, it's it's definitely worth the um the paid. So definitely, I have burned out. through. I burned through so many. Yeah, I've I've got quite the catalog of lessons. Well, I'll talk about that offline sometime. I'm curious to know your journey with yeah, that. Yeah, sure, most definitely. Well, amazing audience, we are live with Brendan Davis. Hey, do check him out again. He is is the podcast host of A Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom. Brendan, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Brendan, what is your earliest... <laughs> yeah, I like that. Ah. It's my favorite. Oh, that's my favorite part. <laughs> what is your earliest childhood memory? Well, I'm one of these weirdos, if you haven't guessed by now, uh-huh. that um, actually has prenatal memories. I remember things in the womb, very vaguely, of course. I mean, I remember impressions of being in the womb, but in terms of being out into the world, the earliest thing that I have concrete memory of is fireflies at night in the American South and being on my grandparents' porch and seeing these thousands of little lights flickering around in the night sky and wondering where they went during the daytime. And then actually I started to see them during the day as well, but they didn't have their lights on because they didn't need it. Yeah. But, but yes, a fireflies in the night sky is my first really concrete memory. How old do you think you were? Oh, two, 
mm. two years old, maybe. Yeah. Why do you think this memory is so clear? Probably because of the impression that it would have made. You know, it's such such an impactful. Um, I mean, this would have been during the time you know when the fireflies are just out and and it's really something hard to miss even as an adult the first time you see fireflies if you haven't before um you know in an otherwise really dark environment and there are just hundreds or thousands of these little flying lighted bugs everywhere that are friendly and they're not trying to bite you or anything yeah so it was i'm sure it was a sense of wonder and then uh yeah it's it's and and the feeling of being at my grandparents home i wouldn't have had any vocabulary for this at you know whatever two years old but over time, I mean, that's that was consistently this awesome, warm place. It was the one consistent place in my life. So I'm sure that that's helped to ingrain it even further. Hmm. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Please. I love the idea of combined energy, if you would. And, um, you know, it's it's like one firefly or well, one firefly in the darkness is pretty effective. Like you'll definitely see it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that we give that its credit. But to see the combination of, of a light and the value that that has and as well as just understanding the value of the meditational space that you've decided to interact within. And um, even the combination of that, right? And what occurs when you combine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that um, is pretty intriguing. So it's just fascinating how those two things connect for me. I think that's a great interpretation. I, I really like that. You're welcome. You're welcome. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Sheena is a punk rocker by the band The Ramones. My mom had a really, really amazing music journalist boyfriend and dumped all this early punk rock. I was the only fifth grader in Anniston, Alabama, I was probably one of the first kids in the U.S. to actually hear the Sex Pistols and the Ramones. So, <laughs> yeah, Sheena is a punk rocker. How fun is that? How fun is that? Yeah, yeah. Well, my friend, I, I'm guessing in China right now, you definitely look like the punk rocker amongst everyone, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably look like kind of a boring business guy. We call, we people call me the the, the Hollywood panda, which I kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, hey, we've arrived at our destination, Brendan. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. Going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Brendan? Yes, you, ready. Okay. Brendan, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Um, I've taught in master's programs for years. So all the students that I meet. Are you married? No. Do you have children? Nope. Trying to raise my inner child. <laughs> Ooh, that's a challenge. <laughs> do you do? <laughs> yeah. Do you believe in God? I do. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Very much. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Don't even have it connected. My TV is a giant extra computer monitor on my desk. Wow. What about screen time, the phone and or the computer? More than eight or less than eight hours a day? More than eight, but I, yeah, more than eight. Yeah, <laughs> more yeah, than eight. Yeah. I, try, I try to limit it when I can, but. It's more than eight. Professional necessity, yeah. It's, it's usually more. Yes, most days it's more than eight, and then and then I'm, I I give myself a little bit of a detox when I can. I, I Saturday and Sunday I barely. I mean, you know, the, you have to use the phone for messaging and stuff, but yeah. um, but I'm not trolling social networks and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could do. We could say, hey, instead of fifty six hours, we could say an average of. 48 hours <laughs> oh, that's, that's 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 generous but i'll take i'll take it thank oh, there you. we thank go there we go well brendan um after thousand one conversations in three months in 2016 i came up with a workbook the name of it being called yours stands for your own unique real self the idea being answer questions go through reflection and then connect to hopefully connect to your mission which i term your own unique real statement if you had to share with us brendan i'm intrigued to know your own unique real statement a statement that represents who you are. What would you say that is? You only fail if you quit. Hmm. And many people have said a version of that, so I can't attribute it to a specific person. It's not my original thought, but that's what I connect to the most through business ups and downs and, you know, traveling around the world and stuff. That's uh, That's been a, a guiding light for me. Love it. A guiding light. Love it. Brendan, mm -hmm. this was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Please be passionate about what you believe in. Follow what you believe in. Um, people put that a lot of ways. But visit crazyinagoodway.com and check out what I'm doing. And there are a lot of great conversations with some interesting people. If people like your show, they might enjoy some of my episodes they too. They definitely so. will. They definitely will. 
Brendan Keith Davis. Um, love the middle name. Thank you for being <laughs> on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Angel, it's really my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.